Welcome to Brian's Wacky News Corner on the Pop Box. Look at me. Look, I'm on video. I'm in a box. We're Hello. here. Get me out of this box. Uh, if you wondered what we look like, this is it. Welcome to our YouTube. Sorry to disappoint. For those who are listening on YouTube, this is now going to be a recorded on video section. So head on, subscribe over on our YouTube channel to see our beautiful faces. Uh, this is Brian's new section, and we're going to be bringing this to you every week before the actual weekly upload goes out so sub smash uh chris how do you do this? smash the subscribe button uh d follow us so you don't miss another beat uh and then just yeah cash app uh my cash app uh <laughs> hundreds of doge and we'll it's be like good smash that like button and subscribe or something uh indeed like we'll get better at this we promise yeah uh, well but this is yeah banter complete uh this is brian's section he's right there hey brian how you doing buddy uh oh hey he's gonna be delivering the news brian we got a lot of uh, news packed in for today so why don't you take it away got some uh chunky news this week so i'm excited to get into it the first piece of news there has been a giant price tag placed on Amazon's upcoming first season of The Lord of the Rings. So the number being thrown around is $465 million for one season, which is a preposterous sum of money by any account. Um, apparently, the, the most expensive TV series ever made. It's it's seeming like it will be, and it's supposed to go for potentially four or five seasons with a potential spinoff. I can't imagine this amount of money could continue to be spent i think a big portion of this is buying the rights which apparently was a close to 250 million dollars in itself but even still this is a 200 million dollar season of television yeah and it just seems absolutely insane um i'm a decently big fan of the lord of the rings movies when they came out i only saw the first hobbit movie i heard those kind of fell off but you know this is something especially with this price point um, it's hard not to be excited about this one. Uh, how are you guys feeling about the upcoming Lord of the Rings season? I'm super excited about it. Like you, I'm I'm also a big Hobbit and Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, I've mentioned that here on the show before. I I agree with you though. I think the the 465 million dollar price tag is going into things outside of just production. Like you said, Brian. Like gotta be. I, I'm maybe talent. Talent could be taking up some of that budget special effects could be taking up some of that budget as far as we know this show is essentially a prequel to lord of the rings and the hobbit where it takes place about a thousand years before those those stories take place so we're in kind of like the silmarillion territory oh, of course uh, Silmarillion. The, yeah, yeah the scene <laughs> the scene at the very beginning of lord of the rings where you see you know the elves and the humans fighting Sauron. Yeah, the, the Silmarillion that's period. kind of like the age. Yeah, yeah. That's like the age that we're landing in. I don't even know why you're describing uh, it. As, as everybody as we, knows what the Silmarillion every, period knows is, that, right? Common right? Obviously. Knowledge. Come on, guys. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but uh, to to put the price tag a little more in perspective for you, yeah, we just said that it's going to be the most expensive season of television ever made, even more expensive than Game of Thrones. This is actually more expensive than the three Lord of the Rings movies put together. Like the budget for all three of those no. films was two hundred and eighty one million dollars. Inflation. So this is like double double what those those films cost. It's which, because of which this is just insane. Soft money we have. So oh, call back to before. Oh no. It's, Miley it's, not, Cyrus. it's, not, it's, not it's because that. Miley Cyrus <laughs> Cyrus twerks and we don't have the Bitcoin standard. That's why uh the art sucks. And that's why it's so expensive. Because <laughs> it's funny money. It's soft, flaccid money, Chris. What don't you understand Everyone about cryptocurrency? Money should be stand Listen, up, folks. my crypto bros grab me in the back. The best period to be alive was definitely uh, the the early 1900s and early 20, uh, 20th century. Yeah. Back me up. In there the was comments. nothing monetarily dangerous or problematic that happened during that time. Not at all. So it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the bison almost went extinct, but you know, that's like neither here nor there at this point. Anyway, Lord of the Rings, uh, there's no bison in Lord of the Rings. How do I feel about this? Which is going to be your follow-up, uh, Brian, I, I assume. How, do, how does Christian feel about the Lord of the Rings thing? Hey, listen, I love high fantasy. It's it's fun. I'm not a big Lord of the Rings fan. I think it's fine. Um, and it definitely, like, if I want to go to sleep, I'm putting that first movie on. And guess what? I'm done by the Dragon Fireworks show. I'm out. I'm out like a light. Uh, but those are still very entertaining movies. They're very, like, special and epic in scope and, and really... Uh, 
got a lot of people into high fantasy that were not. So I appreciate it for all those things. I'm excited that it's not covering uh, the standard Hobbit Lord of the Rings fair. That's my most like anticipated part of it is that, okay, we're getting a new story, something for me to get excited about. I don't have to be thinking about like, right. oh, how's this golem compared to the golem that came out 20 years ago? Because it's so, right. it's so like, it's going to be, it's literally part of cinema it's got to be part of cinema history for like the rest of time. So it, I'm glad it's not trying to go head to head with it, with any of, of the great things that Peter Jackson's uh, trilogy, uh, first trilogy, did, and then his subpar second trilogy. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. But I feel like it's one of those things where it's like if the two episodes are like beautiful, but they suck. I don't know. Do you see that one show with Jason Momoa? And it's like about the blind people in the forest. Like, uh, is that called C? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's on a streaming platform that I won't mention now. But, you know, it's big and it's beautiful. And I got to say, it's like super not interesting at all. And I didn't watch past the second episode. So I totally think it could go that way, too. Let's hope it doesn't with this price point. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to make money spending this money on a TV show. But it's a big, bold move. I've that, got um, one word in 17 syllables for you. Samarillion. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. There it is. <laughs> So the next piece of news we're diving into, a directing trio has been announced for the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So Joaquin Dos Santos, Kemp Power, and Thompson have been tapped to direct this movie. For those who don't know, Dos Santos has previously worked on Legend of Korra. As Dos well Santos as is that guy with the seeds, right? Uh, the big uh, farm company. I have no idea. Oh what my you're talking gosh, about. it's the Monsanto joke. Is that what this is? It took me a second. All right, all right. Oh boy. <laughs> Christian, we're going to have to it's work on your th- humor because it doesn't play as well visually. It's the third. Uh, I think it works better. It's the third. No, I don't remember what it is. It's the third. Dos Santos is it's the third installment of Grand Theft Auto on like the OG like PlayStation 2. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Th- th- all right. Three all right. Dos, Dos Santos. Your jokes are permanent now. I just is. want to remind you. Thank you for reminding me. Locked in. We got to bring the harmonic in at some point. Spider Man. Uh, we said Spider Man. Oh, we got. Yes. Thompson uh, worked as a production designer for the first Spider Verse film. It's back. Excellent. That actually rege- redeemed you, the jokes. I think. Are you not entertained? And Kent Powers is uh, currently Oscar nominated for his adapted screenplay of his play One Night in Miami. So. This is this is pretty big news. Ken Powers also co-directed and co-wrote on Soul, which is a movie that came out um, last year as well. Mm-hmm. This, I was going to see this movie regardless, and this creative team coming to it with uh, a lot of the people producing who were working on the first one, uh, I have very high hopes for this movie. And secondarily, on top of this news, Disney and Sony have struck a licensing deal that will finally, in the long term bring the sony verse movies onto disney plus so from what i understand about this and please correct me if i'm wrong the we recently talked about a different deal that sold the phase one rights to a lot of these movies and so basically what that means is these movies after they go through their standard theatrical run Mm -hmm. for about 18 or about 18 months after that they will be on shoot is it hulu that that made the deal um, so they go. So uh, in, in terms of order of operations here, we have the standard theatrical run where the films are in theaters and then they go into the VOD window, at which point the films are released uh, on VOD and Blu-ray and DVD. So consumers can purchase them. Right. And then once that window ends, they enter into the the pay one window, which is essentially where uh, the streaming services end up picking up the rights for the, this particular content. And in terms of the deal that we talked about a couple weeks ago with Netflix, you know, paying for Sony's catalog, they paid for those those pay one window uh, licensing right. rights. So basically, as soon as the films are done with their VOD uh, window, they're going to go right to Netflix. And then you want to take it from there, Brian? <laughs> right. And then so and they go back into Netflix, theaters. They will eventually go back <laughs> to Disney Plus after that pay one period so exactly. it's a little bit convoluted and chris i appreciate you stepping in to, to help out there no problem but, um in the long term it's going to be nice to have uh, one company have largely all of their content that's put out in one place streaming um disney plus you know it's i think at the price rate 
it's been at right now has been one of the highest quality um highest quality content creators in terms of consistent new content that uh is a must see from our perspective especially um being big marvel fans so um yeah chris how do you feel about um finally all of the sony verse coming to disney plus in like what four years at this point or yeah it's, it's gonna be a while and and yeah. i'm still curious as to when the licensing rights for uh movies that are, that are already pre-existing come into play i'm assuming with that first batch in 2022 like spider-man homecoming spider-man far from home spider-man into the spider-verse i'm assuming that at that point that's when they will go to disney plus along with all the new releases that makes the most sense to me I don't right. have a source on that or I haven't done any research, so don't quote me. But like in, in terms of like what makes sense, that, that seems to make sense. Um, I, this is hilarious because when we talked about the Netflix deal a couple weeks ago, during that conversation, I was like, I guess Spider-Man's never going to Disney+. Plus. And then literally a couple weeks later, Disney works out a deal to procure not only the Marvel content that Sony releases, but also like a select few other titles. So it's uh, just to be clear... Disney doesn't have hold of everything in the Sony catalog. It's a deal specifically meant for like Marvel and maybe some family friendly uh, products that they want to put on Disney plus Netflix is still going to own, well not own, but license majority of the, the new content that Sony's pushing out. But this is great. You know, we're finally going to be able to see the entire MCU uh, streaming on one place this a year from now. Deal includes <laughs> years, years. To my knowledge yeah. deal yeah, includes years. Tom Hardy's Venom. It does. And Morbius. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Basically any Marvel content, any Marvel content that Sony produces gets to go to Disney plus. I don't know where they're going to put venom though on Disney plus. We know of like star in, in international markets where, with like the older content from Disney, but we still don't have that here domestically. They got to start. So maybe something maybe like by that. Then. Yeah. We would hope so. So yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep everyone in the loop as specific dates come out in, in the coming years. The next piece of news. So we all know <laughs> the the track record of toys and video games and things like this being adapted into movies. Just don't throw toys no. into the video game. It's, it's wholly separate. Entities. You're right. The Transformers franchise is a step above Masterworks. <laughs> I'm just saying, like Scorsese adapting. Scorsese loves those movies. <laughs> adapting a toy series and adapting a video game are two different things. But I get what you're. I, I understand. Undeniably you're different. I understand what you're saying. But okay, getting to the actual piece of news, Vin Diesel has signed on to star in a Rock'em Sock'em game movie. Didn't they already? So, didn't uh, Hugh Jackman already make a? I know. Already made Real Steel, boys. Real Steel. I didn't see that movie either. But um, at this point, it's it's becoming a punch em up, a uh, metal punch em up universe. So I'm I'm ready for Hugh Jackman to to make a cameo in this movie. Um, this is very interesting. So Mattel is bringing a lot of their IP into movies these days. They have a Wishbone um, movie in the works, as well as a Barbie movie starring Margot Robbie and written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, oh which is the one I'm probably most excited about. As well as an Uno heist comedy <laughs> starring Joe Yachty. So they're just throwing everything. Why not? Why wall. not? Why not? Why not? Right. And um, I'm kind of here for it. Give me bonkers, punch em up, uh, plastic toy based movies. I'll, I'll check that out. It's um, why not? Right. This Dude, is, we need something to watch. I was unaware of that Barbie movie, but that creative team is crazy. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds so, like a it sounds like sure. a parody bit. It sounds like a parody trailer, you know. Yeah, like something yeah, it's SNL, an SNL sketch. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Insane. You know, my bar for these films is set super low. I'm sorry, you know, like the the brief synopsis. Oh, you don't have high hopes for new rock 'em sock 'em robots starring rock em, Vin sock Diesel. Honestly, they'll probably rock 'em, but I'm not sure they're going to nail the sock in <laughs> uh, Time, time will, that will have Sorry, to rock, rock em. I am learning that it's not rock 'em sock 'em. I thought it was sock 'em, like sock them. Like it is rock 'em sock 'em. Wait, it is that? Oh, I thought it was. I thought you said rock and sockin. No, it's rock 'em sock 'em. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I so have, I was right. I may have misspoke. Oh. Okay. I so thought because maybe the, they have the sock sockets got... sockins. I don't know. Rock'em Sock. I don't know. Save it's me, a toy Chris. that was made like 50 years ago. 
uh, you, you in... like you, you use your thumbs to punch, right? It's right, yeah. You right. punch. You punch, punch and punch. Boys. You punch and punch, and then the the loser goes. When someone gets a headshot, the head, the head pop pops up. up. Yes. Yeah. It's a very simplistic yeah. toy. That's it's an hour and um, hour and forty five there, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, you didn't mention this, but we did get a brief synopsis of what this movie is supposed to be. Uh, and that is Vin Diesel and his son encounter some type of military weapon, which I assume is going to be the Rock'em Sock'em robot. <laughs> but it just, I don't know. The Transformers movies got worse and worse over time. To me, this is like in the same category. There's not, I, I there's not a fucking thought. character in Rock'em Sock'em like lore. There's... They're literally just plastic I... robots Excuse trapped me. in a fighting ring. I think ring. there was the blue one and the red one, if I remember oh, yeah, correctly. Oh, yeah, blue and so... red. Yeah, they're canonical. There's a lot name. of lore to pull from there that people don't know about. Yeah. I live my yeah, life. This is one, ridiculous. One this robotic be... uppercut at a time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this has to be Vin Diesel doing the studio a favor. Or maybe he's really into this. Maybe does does Vin Diesel have kids? I, I don't know. I like maybe this is a movie he wants to and make for I his kids. Sock him. With his feelings on family, I imagine he has kids. Yeah. Gotta, oh, gotta of course. Thanks. It's, a, it's really actually fun. a drama about Vin Diesel plays an abusive stepfather. Oh no! Oh my gosh! It's a revenge oh, no. story where the son gets the the tech and and murders and the his two father. kids are rock em uh, and sock em. <laughs> You just you well, just flip me. I'm here for it. Yeah, now now Can't we're wait. definitely gonna see this movie. We're definitely gonna cover it. So yeah, Vin Diesel, uh, starring in a rock em sock em movie. Mattel doing bonkers this wasn't things. dated for. Right. We're around four twenty territory. This wasn't dated for four twenty. You just double check that 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 wasn't a. I'm not sure when, when this, this is slated to this come is, out. This is legitimate, legitimate news. Of course, this is legitimate. Real. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't an April Fool's <laughs> joke. So the next piece of news, as we often talk about plumbing IP that is successful and rehashing it in some form, this is the second time that something like this is uh, attempted to be done. But Hillary Duff has signed on for a How I Met Your Mother sequel series called How I Met Your Father. They really reached far. For, for the title on this one. Um, I was never a huge fan of How I Met Your Mother. I had friends who were big into it, so I saw you know probably 10 or 20 episodes um, throughout my life, and they were always enjoyable. It was never something that was um, so up my alley that I went back and watched it from the beginning. Um, did you guys watch How I Met, Met Your Mother? I, I, was, uh, I actually watched Lizzie McGuire growing up, so relatively familiar with Hillary Duff. Um, more so than How I Met Your Mother, actually. Yeah. But Chris, you, you did watch some of that? Yeah, I, I mean, not to speak for both of us, but I think Christian and I are both big fans of How I Met Your Mother. Uh, I it, it holds a special place in my heart. Christian talked about it a little bit during our WandaVision episode when we were talking about you know special sitcoms. So I, I would say that both of us are, are probably pretty big fans of the show. Um, my, my question here is, why? Why? <laughs> Like the the other show exists. Like just just come up with something new. The terminology sequel kept being pushed around in this news report, and and yet we never get any information about how it actually functions as a sequel. Right. Aside from it being the exact same premise, except like gender bent and like taking place in in 2021. Um, yeah, good for Hillary McGuire. Duff. I'm glad she's getting work. I, I know, I'm sure it was probably pretty heartbreaking when Hulu dropped the Lizzie McGuire reboot or sequel. Um, so it's good that she has work. That's great. But and I think her show that she is in that's just wrapping up called Younger, Younger. I believe, is mm, actually um, pretty well received. So My wife watches that show. From I mean, oh, nice. the, the few episodes that I've seen are fun. Um, but, but yeah, I why is my main question here? Christian, how, how do you feel about this? Uh, I, uh, I love Hillary Dove. I think she's, uh, I think she's awesome. I, I'm a big fan of Lizzie McGuire growing up and, uh, I think she's tried her damn bestest to have a career in the crazy business that is Hollywood. She was actually in a John Cusack movie, uh, that I'm trying to look up. I was trying to find it right before, uh, we did this thing. I should have had this before, but she was, she was actually played a small role in a, in an okay movie, but I thought she was very good in it, and I'm not gonna be able to I'm not gonna be able to find it in a in a decent enough time, and I'm not being I'm not. Why are looking it up, Christian? Um, this series is coming from the co showrunners of This Is Us and Love Victor, Isaac 
Aptaker and Elizabeth Berger. So I know you had talked about This Is Us some in the past. I don't think you're enjoying it oh, as El much. Elizabeth in the Berger mm, sounds good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I watched the first couple seasons of This Is Us, and I stopped watching because I was just tired of crying every single episode. From what I saw, it, it was a very good show, but I don't know how uh, it, it kind of panned out after the second season. I found it! War Inc! War Inc. Excellent. was the mediocre nice. show that, uh, or m mediocre movie, excuse me, that Hillary Duff is in that I think she's very good in, and it was like the first thing I'd seen her in forever. Uh, no, I think there's a lot of, like, This Is Us is really great. Those showrun showrunners know what they're doing. Um, that's a very enjoyable show that makes me cry all the time uh, as a full-grown man. Uh, I think it could be cool. I I've kind of grown out of sitcoms, as I explained, but How I Met Your Mother was one that I loved. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure this is my bag, but I'm super happy that uh, Miss uh, Miss Hillary Duff's getting some work, and I really do think she's a, a pretty good actor. So um, I'm, I'm, like, I'm optimistic that I won't watch it, but that it'll have fight an audience. I'm positive that I won't watch it. <laughs> Gauntlet laid down. So yeah, that's uh, how I met your father. The Hillary Duff led how I met your mother. <laughs> we all, series. we all know it should have been called how I met your daddy. So right, no, it's funny that you say that. Show. It's funny that you say that Christian, because this is like Brian mentioned earlier, this is the second time they've tried to get a spinoff off the ground for how I met your mother. And the original title was how I met your dad. So I think, how I Met Your Father. Is, How I Met Your Dad better. is, of course. How the, I Met Your Dad. That's the Midwest yeah. drama. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More like your dad met me, huh? With a with a big old pot belly, right in the oh town square. Brian, what I'm else we gonna, got? Man? I'm not gonna embarrass myself with an accent today. He was all <laughs> slack <so>. on. <laughs> Moving on to some stuff that's coming out this week. So we're going to do this a little differently. I'm kind of just going to do a run through of everything that's coming out this week. List them. And then we're going to do a roundtable discussion of uh, uh, what we're most interested in. So the first thing is coming to Netflix this Thursday, the 29th, uh, Yasuke. So this is an anime, and the summary is a peaceful boatman, once known as the Black Samurai, is pulled back into conflict when he takes a little girl with mysterious powers under his wing. So this is really interesting. It's actually based off of a true historical figure uh, from the 16th century in Japan. It's created by LaShawn Thomas and animated by the Japanese animation studio MAPPA and stars Lakeith Stanfield as our as our title character um something else that really drew me to this and actually how i was introduced to it um flying lotus an artist who i i really enjoy and follow is doing the original music for this um cool. chris uh, i hope you were able to watch the trailer for this it looks very much in that animation style of like castlevania and other anim anime stuff that netflix has been doing and this story looks pretty awesome i am very excited for this one how are you feeling about this I, oh, I honestly, I'm, I'm falling back into into the typical. That's uh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's Yasuke. That's coming to Netflix uh, this Thursday. The next piece of news, moving into some movies, we've got Lucy the Human Chimp coming to HBO Max this Thursday as well. I'm going to quickly read the summary of this. As a student in 1970s Oklahoma, Janice Carter took a job caring for Lucy, a chimp raised as a human by psychologists Maurice and Jane Temerlin. But when Lucy reached adolescence, the Temerlins realized her size and strength made her too dangerous to cohabitate with humans and devised a plan to take Lucy to Gambia, where she would be taught to live in the wild. Planning to go along for just a few weeks, Janice ended up becoming the leader of Lucy's small troop of chimpanzee and ultimately left her life behind in the U.S. forever. So this movie shows some actual footage, some recreated stuff of this woman who went and lived in the wild with this formerly captivated chimpanzee and shows their life. Coming off of uh, Godzilla vs. Kong and some of the stuff that was shown in that movie, I felt this was very appropriate and, and on topic to bring up. And just a crazy uh, true story. So that's um, Lucy the Human Chimp. Does be Lucy the Human Chimp fight, fight a... a um... <laughs> Ralph the act Margaret the, Ra Margaret the Ralph the, the just reptile. lizard <laughs> Ralph the, rep the yes. reptiles sorry Our human character has, to, has to step in and fire missiles to to calm everyone down uh, <laughs> it's pretty intense at some point so uh yeah that's Lucy the human chimp that'll be on HBO Max this Thursday on Friday we've got Tom Clancy's Without Remorse coming to Prime Video 
And this movie is based on a Tom Clancy novel. And the summary is seeking justice for the murder of his pregnant wife. An elite Navy SEAL uncovers a covert plot that threatens to engulf the United States and Russia in all out war. This is directed by Stefano Salimo and stars Michael B. Jordan. Um, looks kind of like your standard uh, action thriller. Someone gets pulled back into the game, kick a lot of ass. If you like this kind of movie, you, you'll probably you'll probably find something to enjoy here. The name Can Tom Clancy this? attached to it. These people, you know what you're getting into. These people just yes, need to come exactly. together with these ideas. How about this? I'm pitching on this right now. Tom Clancy's Lucy the Human Chimp versus Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Oh my gosh. Four quadrant. I think that's brilliant. China's going to love Guillermo it. Guillermo del Toro. Oh, it sounds dude. like a billion dollar picture to me. <laughs> you hear us? You hear us, Hollywood? Cowards. Yeah, <laughs> don't know how to make art. <laughs> so that's uh, Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. That'll be on Prime Video this Friday. Also coming out this Friday, we've got the new Pokemon Snap game coming to the Switch. Oh, this Snap. Bandai. Oh, yes. This is developed by Bandai Namco Studios and published by Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. And you travel around and interact with and take photos of Pokemon. Uh, I used to love this game, the N64 original version. It's very easy. You don't have to quickly shoot people, which I'm very bad at uh, shooting photos. You have to shoot the Pokemon (laughs) with a camera. Brian, you do yes, and it's a little <laughs> it's a little less um, anxiety inducing on my part, more like a luxury, a leisurely stroll through the video game. Um, Chris, I know you've pre-ordered this, and I have been tempted since you told me you did to get it, and I probably will end up getting this game. But uh, how are you feeling about new Pokemon Snap? I'm excited. This is 20 years in the making. Uh, everyone who played that game when we were children, you know, in our in our age group have been clamoring for a sequel or some type of remake for two decades. I haven't so slept it's, it's in two decades. Place. I've just been waiting for I know, that it's, new it's Pokemon this, Honestly, this has been weighing on Christian's <laughs> mind for 20 years, and I'm so grateful that it's finally coming out. I because can it, finally honestly, sleep. The weight, the weight has been destroying my friend, and it's just so <laughs> painful to watch. <laughs> uh, I want the Pokemon Snap TMZ edition. We're like, you know, Pikachu's like, get the camera out of my face. Oh, no. And he's trying to get out of like, oh, no. you know, the bar that he's drinking at. And he's just, and then he says something, taken out of context. And you get a picture of him looking a little too electric. And uh, you make the, 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 the news the next day. That's Pokemon O-Snap. <laughs> That's coming out next year, I think. <laughs> yep. TMZ yeah. edition. Bring it out, bring it out. Yes. You know, one, one last Severely thing. damaged and out of tune. <laughs> One last thing. Uh, last week during our weekly upload, I brought up uh, the last blockbuster documentary, in, at which point uh, Danny, our special guest during that weekly upload, mentioned the original Pokemon Snap and how you used to be able to go into Blockbuster with your cartridge and print out a little sticker sheet of some of the photos that you've taken. Well, as of this recording today, uh, Nintendo announced a partnership with, I believe, the company with called Blockbuster. There's in- one in there. <laughs> Log lines. And this company currently makes a portable Polaroid printer uh, that you you will be able to connect uh, to your cell phone, which pairs to your Switch and print out photos from new Pokemon Snap. So I, I just... For real? Really cool For callback. real? Look at how excited Christian is, <laughs> loyal listeners. Again, it's been weighing on him for two decades. The man finally gets some relief. That was like a tail you can see it in his face. Like, this is the perfect episode for us to film because you can actually see it in his face. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! No, oh, this no. is the worst time for us to start recording our faces. Well, well that's it for the uh, Papaholic show. <laughs> it's been good. Let's call James. Um... <laughs> oh, I'm alive. James, the new host. Christian is back, and thank God I was worried. You guys, uh, that is it for the run through of the news. Is there anything specifically? That, that you want to Christian talk to. cast a fib on himself and it's super effective. Ooh. No, that's it. Thank you, YouTubers, oh. for watching. If you're still listening to the show on the regular feed, you can go watch whatever the fuck that just was <laughs> on your favorite YouTube platform, which is YouTube because it is a platform. What am I saying? Let's get out of this section. Subscribe. Oh.